Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another This Week in Pop Culture History Review. And this week, we will be going over the days of April 19th through April 25th. So, thank you. And this video is a extension of the Let's Talk But No Politics OK podcast, hosted by me, Andrew Lenz. So please go check that out. New episodes come out every Sunday on the BICBP Radio Network. And bonus episodes come out every Friday uh, at 7 p.m. Eastern on the Helium Radio Network. And you can also catch my podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Audible, uh, I believe Amazon Music, just many, many different platforms. But today we are going to look over the posts that I made throughout the week. If you're not a, if you if you don't like the F Let's Talk But No Politics Okay Facebook page, go give that a like because every week I make graphics of what things that happen in pop culture history I do put in there in today in history. It's just kind of a little funny kind of thing, but it's more centered around pop culture and nostalgia i don't do too much stuff recent so without further ado let's get in to april 19th so april 19th 1987 the simpsons debut on the tracy allman show this is huge because i guess we all know what the simpsons have become today and what they are today Myself don't watch the Simpsons as the Simpsons as much, but they do hold a place in my heart because they were kind of like that first adult comedy animation cartoon uh, how I want to work it that that I that I watched on TV and it was on the Tracy Allman show. I remember getting excited about watching Tracy Allman because you could see the Simpsons these very crude drawn characters and it wasn't the best but it was it was something pretty funny and it ended up getting really really big uh, I enjoy older Simpsons episodes more than the newer ones I probably have not watched geez the Simpsons in 15 years like new wise since probably the movie came out but I still think they hold a place in my heart and that's where they need to be is right there. They are iconic. They are entertaining. They are great. So April 19th, 1987, the Simpsons debut on the Tracy Allman show. So today in history, April 20th, 1937, George Takai is born huge. I love George Takai think a lot of people do he is one of those i think lost actors from star trek the original series where the average casual person when you say star trek especially original series they go right to kurt and spock they do not really think about george takai but he's kind of come back in the mainstream i think over the years not total mainstream but there he played Sulu. I didn't even mention who he played. He played Sulu on Star Trek, the original series. And he's got that classic one liner. He is a gif or a gif, however you want to say it, even a meme. He just bust out with the oh my. And that is George Takai in April 20th, 1937. Or April, I'm sorry, April 20th, 1937, he was born and put into our hearts as well. Uh, April 21st, 1986, Gerardo Rivera opens up Al Capone's vault on live TV to re reveal that there is nothing inside. I don't remember this, but... I've seen things about it. I've heard 
uh, older, you know, people a couple of years old. I'm about three or four at this point. So I don't really care about, I don't even know who Al Capone is. I don't care about Geraldo Rivera. I don't even know if I was allowed up at this point. <laughs> but I did hear this. It's like a, some big two-hour special. And they finally get in there and there's nothing because you're thinking Al Capone, the guy that uh, tax evasion, everything else, he's got to have money. He's got to have tons of money in there, treasures, everything else. Oh, my goodness. We're going to find all this stuff. It's going to be absolutely amazing. And come to find out that it's completely 100% empty so i think that was just total egg on geraldo rivera's face and to this day is still talked about as probably one of the greatest tv flubs of all time so april 21st 1986 geraldo rivera opens up al capone's vault on live tv to reveal that there is nothing inside poor geraldo uh April 22nd, 1978, the Blues Brothers make their first appearance on SNL. Okay. Uh, my father, I mean, he didn't really discuss too much, you know, what he was into or anything like that. But this was one thing that he did, you know, talking about from the past when we got into younger years, we were, I'm going to say forced Kind of like I don't force my kids to watch movies from when I was younger. But the Blues Brothers movie, it's got everything in it. I would say action, you know, with the car chases through the mall, the iconic car chase through the mall. Uh, seeing Carrie Fisher not play Princess Leia was pretty amazing for me as a kid. And just how they acted going into the restaurant, ordering uh, two whole chickens or plain white toast. You know, that's just weird stuff. Driving around in the cop car and then coming to see the fabulous Blues Brothers band because they're getting the band back together. And I never really seen them on SNL so much, but it, it's still one of those things that SNL was a stepping stone into the movie and the Blues Brothers being this iconic duo of Jake and Elwood Blue and they just the, the adventures that they go on the movie is amazing uh the songs they're actually very talented it's one of those things where i guess comparing it to what Lonely Island did on SNL i didn't really watch SNL at that point but i've heard the Lonely Island songs you know, it's it's cool songs, a good routine with people that have talent. A lot of times on these shows, there's people that don't have the musical talent, but yet they're going to do like a band or something like that. That could be funny. But the Blues Brothers, absolutely amazing from movies, from everything else. And when John Belushi died, it, it kind of died with it. I'm not going to lie. Blues Brothers 2000 was it was OK. It had its moments, but it wasn't definitely the original of what it was so april 22nd 1978 the blues brothers make their first appearance on snl uh, april 23rd 1985 new coke is released here's another thing i'm probably three four years old at this point i don't remember new coke i don't like coke i well coca-cola <laughs> <laughs> Coca-Cola. It's the 80s. You got to watch how you say Coke. Uh, but Coca-Cola. And here they are. They're changing what has worked for years since what? The 1800s. And they just change it and they're like, this recipe is no good. We're going to do it. Uh, there's conspiracy theories about, say, that this is the way to boost their sales to put out this debauchery of a new coke and then all of a sudden you release coca-cola classic and then people are like ah you went back so now i'm gonna buy more of yours and i'm not gonna go for pepsi because in the 80s there was that huge i know more in the 80s i know there was a book because my aunt read it uh, about the cola wars 
you know, we have the Cold Wars, we had the Council Wars. There's a lot of wars going on in the 80s and the early 90s. Cold War. But this was one of those conspiracy things where people think Coca-Cola did this on purpose just to, you know, boost their sales. It might have been that. It might have been, let's try something new. We got to compete with Pepsi now. Eh, either way, I know I got some backlash because I know what's going on at Coke in the news, but that's a political thing and we're not going to talk about it. We're just going to focus on the pop culture side of it. So this is very interesting. Was it a conspiracy theory? Was it or is it that conspiracy theory where they're like, hey, we're going to go with this new one and then we're going to release the old one back and try and get, you know, great sales or marketing going on? Or is it just them saying, hey, we're going to switch this up. We're going to go with Pepsi or we're going to challenge Pepsi with this new flavor and go from there. But today in history, April 23rd, 1985, new Coke or April, yep, April 23rd, 1985, new Coke is released and totally panned. So uh, April 24th. 1982, Jane Fonda's first workout video was released. Once again, I know Jane Fonda's political stance. I don't want to discuss Jane Fonda's political stance. Uh, This is more of a nostalgia uh, pop culture thing to me. Uh, Growing up, my mother had Jane Fonda workout tapes. I had no, when I was younger, I had no idea what she, what her political stance was on wars and everything else. I don't want to get into that. This is called Let's Talk But No Politics, okay? But I just want to address that this has nothing to do with the political statement. That is why it has this. We, you got to sometimes be able to separate things. And this is what I'm doing with this. So the Jane Fonda workout tape was something my mother had, uh, you know, did it, everything else. I remember at one point we were, our house was robbed or burglarized, either way, how you want to put it. And they took all the video cassette tapes except for the Jane Fonda workout tape. So that, so that, that kind of tells you things there too. But I remember watching my mother doing it. And then, uh, you know, I tried to do some of this stuff as a kid. I was just a little kid. I don't think she had her first one, but later on in the line, she had Jane Fonda workout tapes. And I remember the one thing I thought was hilarious because they had like one dude in there. And at the end of it, they like locked him inside of the gym. And like I said, I'm I'm a little kid. I just thought it was funny that they did that. But this is kind of a very nostalgic thing for me, something that I don't think about on a daily basis but when i when i see it it like jogs my memory and goes back to that time where it was like wow you know we have beach body and stuff now but before that we had jane fonda's workout tapes and buns of steel and uh, what is it tybo and stuff like that i mean tybo was more in the 90s and stuff but here's jane fonda's workout tape right there so april 24th 1982 jane fonda first workout video is released so here we are on our final date and that is april 25th 1982 the final episode of who's the boss airs who's the boss now well that's a question great question on community uh it's very very in- very good show, but once again, who is the boss? Is it Tony? Is it Angela? Is it Mona? Is it Sam? Is it Jonathan? Definitely not Jonathan, but it's such a fun show of this guy. It's, it was almost like an odd couple show, once again, going with the odd couple theme now that I'm thinking about it. But you got this guy, former baseball player, Tony Tony Maselli, uh, hurts his knee, wants a better life for his daughter, becomes the housekeeper for Angela Bauer, the high-powered business, independent businesswoman, and her son Jonathan, and her promiscuous mother Mona, and they all gotta live together, get along with each other, and it's it's a great 
it's a great show. I think it's one of the top shows from like the eighties and then as you can see into the early nineties of all time. Uh Tony Dans is amazing. Judith Light, Alyssa Milano's great in this. I don't I forget who played Mona and Jonathan, but all the characters work so well together. I'm not a big fan of Jonathan. I don't know. I just found him as every once in a while you find like the annoying kid. Everybody loved Alyssa Milano. I mean, she was in Commando and just how great she looked. I'm not going to not going to mince words on how great she looked, but you had such a great comedy go around Mona with one liners and everything else. But who's the boss? It's probably one of the most iconic shows ever. I know, I think somebody said it was like on Tubi TV or uh, Crackle or Pluto or one of those free streaming services if you want to go check it out. I don't know if all seasons are on there, but if you've never seen it, just go, just go check it out. It's a great, great dynamic. Uh, It's almost like a, like the nanny kind of ripped this off in a way, but not really. But if you ever get a chance, go Check out Who's the Boss if you've never seen it. And if you've seen it, I'm pretty sure it's got a special place in your heart as well and in nostalgia. So that concludes this week in history review for the week of April 19th through April 25th. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, Please check out other videos on YouTube as well as my retro gameplay. Uh, And I also put up some tiering videos as well. And please go check out my podcast, Let's Talk But No Politics, okay? New episodes every Sunday on the BICBP Radio Network, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Audible, Amazon Music, and also bonus episodes every Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern on the Helium Radio Network. And please go check out the Facebook page. Uh, but if you don't, Come check out the video, and you can do a real quick catch-up. And with that being said, I'm Andrew Lenz. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night.